Welcome, everybody. I'm here today with Amber Vilhauer. Uh, Amber is an online digital marketing expert who supports business people to establish a powerful, integrated online presence that gets results and empowers them to make a difference in their industry. Uh, she worked with Cutco for a few years in New Mexico and Colorado, uh, advancing as far as the uh, pilot manager, division office manager um, in Denver, Colorado, where she helped run the division headquarters. Uh, in 2007, uh, Amber started her own company. It's called NGNG Enterprises. That stands for No Guts, No Glory. And over the past 12 years, Amber has supported more than 1,000 entrepreneurs on six continents to get results. She's also the launch manager behind several number one best-selling books, uh, including those for such luminaries as Mark Victor Hansen, Brendan Bouchard, uh, Lisa Nichols, Bill Walsh, and Les Brown. So I'm really excited to have you here today, Amber. Thanks for making the time. I'm excited. You've always been one of my favorite mentors. And so now to be here with you is like, it's super special. So thanks for having me. <laughs> all right. All right. Outstanding. Well, let's hear a little bit about your story and, uh, and how you got started uh, with Cutco Vector. Sure. Well, I think it's uh, noteworthy that as a teenager, I was very lost didn't have communication skills, I had no confidence, I didn't do that well in school starting out, um, and I was just struggling. I was struggling to find my place in the world. I had just started going to the University of Arizona in Tucson, Arizona, and um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. I looked in the newspaper, so that dates me, but I looked in the newspaper and I was looking for a part-time job and I was sick and tired of working at restaurants, and there was an ad for to come in for this group interview, 1450 an appointment. And I was like, that's interesting. So I went in and I was so impressed by the product. I got the job. I started training. I had never sold anything a day in my life. I knew nothing about sales. And uh, that summer I finished number two in my office and I was on the fast track for management. And it was seriously looking back one of the most pivotal moments in my life, total game changer. I am a huge Cutco fan. Like I have nothing but the best things to say about the entire experience. Well, that's awesome. That's great. And what were some of the uh, more transformational experiences that you had during your, your time with Cutco and Vector? Oh my gosh, I had them every single day. I mean, <laughs> I think that there were a lot of moments of just creating impact building relationships with customers or other reps. Um, I loved the opportunity to make an impact as a manager. So here you had new reps coming in that had no confidence or no clue what they were doing. And that's where I started. And so I was able to inspire them with my story and, you know, give them the confidence that my manager had given me. And so I just loved the positivity, the energy. I mean, everybody was trying to achieve goals on a regular basis. Like, like literally all of it was transformational for me personally and my ability to help create transformation for clients or within the organization as a whole was an unbelievable opportunity. Yeah. Wow. How, how did you end up transitioning from Arizona to Colorado? I had been working in the Tucson office for about three years and, um, you know, I was going to assistant manager training in Albuquerque, New Mexico once a month. And I loved the AM training sessions. Um, I really loved studying the next step. And when I was there, of course, you get to know other people inside of your division and Ram Ramon Rouse at the time, who was leading the Denver office. We just developed this relationship and, you know, there was an opening for pilot sales manager and I was all in. So the conversation just sort of unfolded and I actually gave up my last year of college. I didn't even end up graduating and I took a leap of faith and I moved out to Denver and it was the best, one of the best decisions of my life. And we just started to crush it together and really build out the division in a really uh, powerful way. Yeah, so you were it, you were heavily involved in many aspects of developing 
the organization. Like you were working with receptionist teams, you were helping train yeah. new managers. Like there was a, there was a lot that you were doing there, right. Yeah. That was giving you a lot of skills and things that you're using now. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't remember exactly how it, it started. I feel like I almost volunteered to be in charge of the receptionist. And so in the peak of summer, I think I was managing about 32 and we had these regular calls and I was giving them training and helping with their efficiency. Um, we would do in-person daily meetings and um, I would then record those meetings on video to then give them to the people who couldn't come or for future, you know, receptionists. So I loved working with the receptionist. That was a lot of fun. But then even outside of that, just developing branch and district managers or having, you know, an impact on the AMs and the other sales managers. I mean, I was really, I was all in, uh, jumped in with both feet in every way. Yeah, that's cool. And now you were also there when Drew Frank moved <laughs> to Colorado. And for anybody that doesn't know this, Drew Frank has truly become one of the all-time greats in the Cutco business for the last, oh man, at least the last uh, eight, nine, 10 years has been the top field manager in the company. Um, I, I, he, he has evolved to hold the title of uh, greatest manager running an office that the company has ever seen. And uh, you were there when he first came to Denver. And, and anything you can speak to about uh, the young Drew Frank that uh, you feel like people would, be, would love to hear? I just love Drew. I mean, seriously, I remember when Drew was kind of shopping for an, a home. Like, where was he going to go to develop his leadership and open up a district office? And Ramon and I would have conversations like, we've got to bring him into the Rocky Mountain Division. <laughs> And so, um, you know, he ended up flying out and we took him to dinner and we just tried to develop that relationship and let him know what our goals were for the division and why this would be a good home for him. And, you know, luckily he agreed. So he came out and I have to tell you that Cutco and Vector really does tend to attract in remarkable individuals. And you can always tell, though, the people that are going to go the furthest. And so just in my first interaction with Drew, there is no surprise at all to see where he is today. I mean, he's sharp as a tack. He's got a big heart. He's so disciplined and focused. And, you know, he wants to be the best. And so here he is all of these years later. And I'm just so incredibly proud of him. Yeah, it's been great to see his rise and to, I just find it intriguing to know that you, you were there when he first came out to Colorado, <laughs> got to see yeah. the very young Drew. Yeah. Um, so what prompted you to start your own company in, in 2007? Well, I knew that I didn't want to go district um, and I can't tell you why other than it just didn't feel like that was my path. And so I sort of felt like I got as efficient and as strong as I could within the organization. And then I just instinctively knew that there was something else in my future. And so I took the leap. I actually told Ramon a year in advance, like I'm thinking about maybe transitioning out. And um, when I left, I had just written a book and I was thinking maybe I'll try to pursue publishing it. What am I going to do? I didn't have any really big plans. Um, and I ended up, running this event in Denver, teaching entrepreneurs how to get money into their business and how to market it online. And I was just the event planner. So I was using a skill set that I learned through managing Cutco conferences into this um, format. These two partners were running the conference. So I was just helping with event planning. I didn't even know what a blog was. I knew nothing about social media. But the people that came in to speak on the stage were some of the like greatest internet marketers of all time still. Hmm. And so I got a great A education just being there at the event. And it prompted me to start my own crappy little blog. And uh, I started teaching myself about online marketing and SEO. I taught myself code. And then I ended up opening up a service to help other people by building their websites and then doing their marketing for them. And so, you know, a decade later, now I help business owners by either building their branding and website, because that's the hub and heart of everything else that you do online. So it's really important you have a good website, or we can help through offering marketing strategy and systems 
And as a side gig, because I love it, I also help launch books. And it's been a remarkable journey. Really so much fun. What have been some of the, the main challenges that you feel like you've, you've overcome? I would say a big challenge for me was um, that I had to learn the hard way was developing systems and procedures in my company. So in the beginning, I, I was doing it all, right? And I wanted to do it all so that I could learn. And somewhere along the way, I just had a hard time letting go of that idea and starting to delegate and trust other people. And so I actually got to this point where I had my hands in every aspect of the business and almost completely burned out. And I had to learn the hard way that by documenting how I'm, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it this way, then that can be delegated out to somebody else. And because I've documented my own way of doing it, it sets them up for success and to be able to consistently carry out that same task as if I had done it myself. So that was really a tremendous learning experience for me. And it's been a game changer in my business ever since. But one other thing that I'll mention, because it's kind of unique, from the very beginning, Dan, my approach to marketing um, and to building out enough clientele to be able to grow comfortably was I've always been focused on this idea of strategic partnerships. So I would align myself with a publishing company out in California so that they would send their clientele to me for website development. And over the years, it's been anywhere from speaking organizations to um, really big popular influencers and coaching enterprises. And so I just build relationships with other companies that share the same audience that I'm trying to work with, develop a relationship with them so I get a regular flow of clients coming in. And then I don't have to stress out wondering where my next client is coming from. I've never had to worry about that in the way that most other companies have. So it was less of a struggle and more of a tip perhaps, but I think it was one we're sharing. Yeah, that's a great insight. And I think we can definitely circle back to that, just the idea of the, the importance of building relationships and how that leads to oh, yeah. referrals <laughs> and all sorts of other elements of business. I really like what you, what you said about documenting what and how you're doing as you're building a business. Documenting what and how you're doing, um, you know, what you're doing and how you're doing it and so why. that, yeah, so that others can sort of follow in that and eventually you can delegate more of the tasks uh, to others but they're following your process and they're doing things the way you would do them i think about like in in vector you know when people be you know take on the district manager role um everything that they need to do is already figured out like there's pretty much a success manual that people That's can follow exactly right um which makes it a lot easier than most places where you start a business mm -hmm. and there's not a manual, there's not a process. You have to figure that process out. And I'm so hard. <laughs> right. And, and if you're figuring out as you're going along, but you're not documenting it, it you, you're always in that hamster wheel where you got to keep doing everything. Um, but being able to document the process, why you're doing something, how you're doing something just makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of young business people can, can resonate with that concept. I know, and because Cutco, like that was my first experience, you sort of take it for granted and think that's the standard. But as soon as you go out on your own, there's nobody saying, here's the exact way that you handle objections. Here's the exact way that you run your interview or your training or anything else, you know? I mean, Cutco is seriously one of the most brilliant companies that I've ever witnessed. I mean, they have it really down. And I think that's how they're able to get such a consistent result across the board as they document everything. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk about uh, the idea of somebody beginning their online presence. Um, I think that this is, you know, having an online presence is something that is important for anyone. This does, doesn't just apply to authors, speakers, and coaches, which I know is who you target. Mm -hmm. um, but anybody can begin to build their online presence. And, and what advice would you have for a young entrepreneur that wants to start doing that? Well, there are really a couple of key things and there is no right or wrong path. I mean, literally you could start wherever you feel excited to start and build it from there. So that's a really important thing that most people don't talk about. Um, for me, what I did is I started a blog because I wanted to 
write articles or content based on my interests. And so I would just start writing as often as I felt inspired to. And all of a sudden I'd get a couple of comments. Um, then I would add a little form on my website so that people could subscribe to an email list. And then I would start to email the people who signed up every once in a while. And, you know, it just sort of naturally built over time. And um, as I started putting more and more blog posts out there and email subscribers were coming in, I would survey them. And I would ask them like, what's your number one burning question when it comes to websites or social media or whatever it is? And they would tell me. And so then I would just write more on those topics. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost making fun of it to a degree, but it really can be that simple. If you feel like starting a blog or a website is just too much for you right now, you're not even at that level, then start just writing stories and asking questions and dialoguing on social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or both. But I think it's just a matter of getting content out there, sharing your interests, and most importantly, from your unique vantage point. Because the world isn't looking for another Dan Cassetta or another Amber Vilhauer. They're looking for what your unique thought process is, your unique experience, so that it can shift their thinking or inspire them in some new interesting way. Um, so the more you're dialoguing, putting content out there, people will respond. You can survey, ask what they might want to know more about. You could do more of that and then even create a product to start sharing with that audience that you're building and just let it naturally organically grow from there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, sorry, I see that. Uh, he, <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I just I'm, kept going. <laughs> I'm interviewing Hero. <laughs> I'm interviewing Hero. We'll, we'll cut this out of the audio, but I'm interviewing Hero. Uh, today at, uh, in one hour and uh, it looks like he might have mistook 1130 for 1030 and jumped right on right there. Well, so. I could start that segment over. It's no, you did, it, you. you did it perfectly. You okay. did it perfectly. So <laughs> that was outstanding. We will, we will chop that right out. So yeah, let me just uh, gather my out. thoughts <laughs> here and be able to, to do this. Um, yeah, I, I really like that, Amber, and and the idea of beginning to do some writing in in some form, to me, makes sense for a lot of young people. Um, you know, one of my uh, uh, old Cutco uh, mentees, I guess you could say, who has made it really big in life is a, a guy named Andrew Bosworth. He's uh, one of the top guys at Facebook now, and um, he has a blog. And in his blog, one of the articles is called Writing is Thinking. And I know I've shared this one with a lot of the young people that I work with now, um, because when you think about putting into words some of the concepts that you want to share or ideas that you want to teach, it really helps you to internalize them. It really helps you to kind of clarify how you feel about something and internalize those ideas yourself. And and I've encouraged people, like at the very least, like write thoughtful Facebook posts or LinkedIn posts, um, you know, that you can put out there and begin doing something that gets you on that track of uh, putting your putting your thoughts into writing. It just uh, 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 that really resonates with me and, and makes a lot of sense. It's something I think that uh, that everybody should be doing. Yeah, and if I may, just one other idea came to thought to mind. I have a client. Uh, his name is Howie Craw. And Howie is trying to be a professional speaker. He has a full-time job on the side, but you know, he got this idea to start doing a daily Facebook live stream. So he loved going down to the beach and watching the sunrise every morning around 5 a.m. And so he would just turn on his phone and start talking about some story, some insight. And one day the topic would be resiliency and the next day it would be about relationships and the next day it would be about gratitude. And he just kept showing up consistently every single day watching the sunrise at the beach. And all of a sudden he started growing this following. So then he came to me, we set him up with a simple blog website where he could then embed the replay of the live streams as an individual episode on this blog. So he wasn't even a writer. He's never even written a single article but he did it in the form of these videos. He had no clue where, what was gonna come of this. He had no monetization model. He was just sharing. And now, fast forward a few months, he's done more than 130 episodes. 
And the speaking career is developing out of this. His following has started to scale like crazy. And now he has enough content that he could transcribe into a book and launch that to further accelerate his speaking platform. I mean, this is just an example of where do you start? Well, he had no plan, but he just started. And who knows what's going to come from it. Yeah. And, and I love what you said about he was just sharing. That I think that all of this stuff starts out without, without uh, the intent in mind of, you know, hey, I'm going to figure out how to monetize yeah. uh, this resource one day. But more, it starts out, I think for the most successful people, it starts out with them thinking, I just want to give value to the world and have more and more and more people want to hear, you know, and see my stuff. And um, the, the, the people that are doing that are trying to come up with really valuable stuff to share. And, and it, the natural process of that is that their following gets built uh, mm -hmm. and they're building this asset that they could tap into down the road if they want to. I also think Vector is such a great vehicle for that because mm -hmm. our, our young managers are getting in front of, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of oh every single year that they recruit in their office. And there's going to be a certain segment of those people that become raving fans. And, um, and over, over many years of working in Vector, people can build a great resource that they can share value with to the, to the rest of the world. And that, and that down the road, it can be something that they uh, benefit from financially if they want to. Uh, yeah. and, and so, yeah. And I would just add, don't second guess your thoughts or ideas. Because I have a tendency to do that. And I think, oh, that's stupid. Or like, doesn't everybody know that? Or doesn't everybody do this this way? And the answer is no. I mean, the older I get, Dan, the more I realize how unique I actually am and the, that there's value in telling other people about the way that I view the world. And it, it really makes an incredible impact. So you could even be, you know, in a customer's home and you learn something or, you know, get an idea just out of that interaction. And then you can go home and do a live stream about it or write about it. And that could create a tremendous impact. So don't take anything for granted, you know, just share. Yeah, that's outstanding. Awesome. Um, what do you feel like uh, you've learned from online marketing that could, uh, that you could shorten the learning curve for everybody that wants to leverage it to grow their business? Like how, how can you help people shorten their learning curve here? Honestly, not, to, I mean, I feel so repetitive sometimes to keep harping on the same things, but if I had to do it all over again, what would I be focused on? And it would be relationships. It's the fastest way to grow. It's the more secure way to grow. Um, so a lot of people, when they start their online journey, they're going to buy into courses and programs and buy into this and try that. And it's like, it just is the long road to success. And there's not some magic wand that you can wave and you know it's not like some expert has the secret that you don't and so honestly at the end of the day it's all about relationships so if i were to start online i would be going out into social media and sharing my ideas with the world but i would also be targeting other people that I'm inspired by, perhaps mentors, like I would start following Dan Cassetta and then I would start engaging with his posts and I would like them and comment on them and share them on my profile feed. And what's going to happen is Dan's going to say, wow, who's this Amber chick? She's like always such a raving fan. At some point, Dan will come over to my side and look at who I am or what I'm doing. And if he likes it or finds value in it, he's probably going to share my stuff to his massive audience, which is going to give me exposure that I couldn't even otherwise pay for. I mean, come on. And so I could then uh, send Dan a private message and say, Dan, I'm so inspired by what you're doing. Would you be willing to be interviewed on a live stream on my feed? And maybe Dan would say yes. And what impression would that set forth to my community? Or what value could that give to my community? And how could that help me grow in ways that I wouldn't be able to otherwise? So anytime we can really set our intention on how can I start a conversation with other people? How can I engage with other people? Who do I want to be connected to that's at a far greater level that I may not even know if I could ever, if that person would ever even care about me, you know, but can I expand myself and try at least? And I think honestly, I would just keep doing that and see where I land. Hmm. That, that, that's such a great 
I just thought that you had right there insight and and it it makes so much sense and it's exactly it's exactly true what you described is I, I will notice people who are you know commenting on things that I put out and and I and after a while I do get curious and go, <laughs> yeah, who is this person like what and I I'll go look at their yeah. LinkedIn profile and see their history or their you know their whatever they have on Facebook um, and see their history. Google them, and a lot of times there's something else I can find right there. And um, and 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 in that process, there have been some people that I've encountered that I'm like, I need to I need to meet this person in person and get to know them a little bit. Like we are birds of a feather. Um, so it, it is interesting that uh, that you shared that that thought. I think that's a great great strategy that people can can follow. Um, what about the fact that, you know, social media these days is so crowded and it, and there's so many things uh, that are competing for people's attention. Um, Other thoughts you might have about how to get people's attention, how to keep people's attention on social media, anything else you could share along those lines? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, I think honestly, be yourself. So many times we try to do what Dan's doing because it looks like it's working for Dan. And so I'm going to try to be Dan. But then, you know, again, that's not setting you apart in any way. And it's not fully authentic. And somehow other people can sense that. But when you're sharing your uniqueness, you're like, you could be walking, you could be in a drive through somewhere and you could see something on the side of your car, just snap a photo of it and even put a filter, a unique filter on it and share it with whatever thought came to mind looking at this one scene. You know, something that's unique and different, I think will help you really stand apart. And anytime you can be using social media to be social, I know, riveting concept, but seriously, most people don't realize that social media is a platform to engage with other people. And I think the trickiest thing right now, Dan, is that everybody's in such a rush, right? We all want to save time. We're trying to automate everything, but that actually can work against you if you're not careful. At every turn, I'm trying to create connection, right? So um, whether I take five minutes to engage with other people, or I take five minutes to remember to share my unique experiences with the world. And the last thing that I would add is any time that you can share video, whether it's a pre-recorded video that you've done that's maybe tip-based that you think will help people, or if you can do live streaming, both of those are going to give you a much stronger result than any other medium because people feel connected with you and they like that and we're craving Mm -hmm. that. In some ways, social media has made us feel really isolated and alone. And so finding ways to, to bring people back into your experience is only going to make it more successful for you. Is there a sweet spot for length when it comes to videos? I mean, the data out there will say that you'll capture most uh, people's attention if it's a minute or less, but then there's not much of a drop off between minute two and minute six. So for me, I'll experience a 5% drop off and I'll just max out my six minutes because I can give way more value. I can share my energy and my personality with people way more in six minutes than I can in one minute. And then surprisingly, there's only about a 5% drop off between minutes seven and 15. So if you go to my YouTube channel, for example, just go to YouTube and search Amber Vilhauer. I've got tons of videos on there that are very detailed, packed with value about how to do marketing or get website conversion or launch your book, whatever it is. And you'll see, I have several videos on there that are 15 minutes, some are even 20, and I get great results with those. So I think you have to know your audience. um, And I think it also depends on the industry, right? So if you are doing videos that are more like a cat playing with a ball of yarn, it's probably going to be hard to capture people's attention for six minutes. Maybe a one minute video would be good in that market for (laughs) my market B2B. I think you have a little bit more time that you can spend. Okay, great. Um, You referenced your website, ambervillehauer.com. We'll put that in the show notes so people can see that. Is there, is there any place else people should follow you or you'd want people to follow you? 
everywhere. Come on. Uh, <laughs> well, you can just Google me because I have three websites and I'm on all the social networks. So where, whatever the platform is that works best for you. I'm also very um, communicative with my email following. So you can subscribe to on any of my websites, but I think Amberville Hour is a pretty safe place to start. Yeah, great. A-M-B-E-R-V-I-L-H-A-U-E-R. Dot com. So we'll, again, we'll put that in the show notes along with some other links to, to uh, uh, other stuff that you have. Um, let's talk about this idea of connecting with people. Um, so I've offered um, a like networking uh, training that I've given both inside of Vector and outside of Vector. And one of the concepts that I'll um, open up with is the idea that uh, – considering the question, what if you knew that someone you were going to meet today was going to have a profound impact on the rest of your life? How would you go through your day if you had that awareness? You didn't know which person it was going to be. You didn't know what time of day it was going to be, but there was going to be somebody you met today that was going to have a profound impact on the rest of your life. And, and I think that taking that approach to every day enables us to capitalize on the opportunities that come our way when there is this amazing connection right in front of us that we weren't expecting. Um, can you speak a little bit to just your thoughts and your concepts on how you interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis in ways that are, are building greater connections? Happy to. Yeah, this is um, something that's extremely important to me actually. And what you just spoke to, I do that every single day. Um, and it's, it's sometimes tough on the days that you are feeling off and you just want to be kind of closed off from the world, but you're missing huge opportunities if you do that. I don't know if you've heard of the strengths finder uh, assessment and profile. My number one is relationships. <laughs> and so this is really important to me. And it's kind of interesting because growing up, um, I didn't have friends. I was not well liked. And so now for it to be such an important thing, it's because I really understand the value of relationships. And I, I experience this all day long. I'm constantly on the phone and talking to people in my business, Dan. And I think that if I could break down some important qualities that it would take in order for you to deepen that relationship the most, one is just being open. And I see that it might sound pretty simple, but a lot of people are kind of closed because we've been hurt in the past. And so we don't trust as openly. It's hard to put ourselves out there. We don't want to get hurt. We don't want to get rejected or criticized. And so we might only be sort of open to meeting new people and then we're feeling it out. And I think if you want to really maximize the relationship, you have to be wide open wide open and you have to really trust other people and you have to be trusting. Um, and so it does take somebody that has courage and bravery, uh, but it's so worth it. Right. I think another important quality of building relationships is being fully present also might sound like a really simple one, but especially in this day and age, uh, I'm sort of here on the podcast, but I'm really wondering like what's going on in my Facebook right now, or, oh my gosh, I've got seven emails or when's my next call or what time is, oh my, I'm hungry, you know, like whatever it is. If I'm distracted thinking about those things, I'm not opening myself up to what's possible in this moment, this opportunity to really be present with Dan and connect with Dan and build this relationship without expectation. I have no idea what's going to come of this, right? But I hope it's something magical and profound and, and lifetime long, right? Um, and so I think that putting yourself out there, being open to relationships, and you never know what's going to come of it. It could be a stranger in a line at Starbucks. And oftentimes in those situations, don't we just sit there on our phones, ignoring everybody else around us. But the other morning I'm in a Starbucks and there's a gentleman in front of me and we're both watching somebody order a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at like eight, eight o'clock in the morning. And he makes this comment to me like, well, oh gosh, I've never ordered a peanut butter and jelly in the morning before. And I thought in this moment, I have, a choice. I can say, yeah, that's weird and just shut them down. Or I could open up a conversation and see where it leads, which is exactly what I did. And 30 minutes later, we learned all kinds of things about each other's lives and a really meaningful relationship was built. 
And I don't know if any, if I'll ever hear from him again and it doesn't matter, but do you think that even in that moment, it shifted him and maybe he's going to be more open to other relationships and communicating to other people in the future? Is it going to brighten his day and what is the impact that that's going to have? And there are all sort of benefits to being present with people, I think. Yeah. Oh, that, that was great. <laughs> that, that was really great. Just the openness and the presence. Um, and, and I like what you said at the end about he might be more open with someone else. You know, that, that we, there's um, a, an effect that occurs in people who know us just based on how they see us acting. That when you're a certain way, uh, the people in your circle will be a certain way and that the people in their circles who you don't even know are more likely to also develop those same ways of being, those same ways of thinking. And, uh, and there's this just ripple effect that we can have on the world through our own presence uh, and, and how we are acting on a day-to-day basis. Um, I find this stuff to be difficult sometimes because I'm, I'm an introvert at heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, people who know me in a professional setting will see me like speaking from the stage and, you know, Same. maybe, you know, I'm comfortable with all that stuff. Um, but when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm pretty introverted and um, it's not always easy for me to open up in conversations. I'm kind of the person at a, at a gathering of people who's more comfortable, like standing along the wall on one of the sides me too. and out of the center. Um, but I realized like that's not conducive to my relationship building and that I have to be able to get out of my comfort zone sometimes and open conversations or, and talk to people. Um, and that has led to a lot of really amazing, you know, interactions. So um, for anybody listening who is introverted, I, I do think it's possible for introverts like all of us to be able to expand their comfort zones and still become great in this area at connecting with other people. So um, definitely something that I think is valuable. Um, I also, you know, I feel like you mentioned here that you've evolved in this area, that you weren't great at this stuff when you were younger. And um, that's something that I think can be inspiring for anybody who's listening is just the idea that we all evolve in this area. It's not something that comes naturally to every single person. Before I started with Cutco, I was very, very shy and had, you know, my communication skills were null and void. And when I, when I saw what the job was, was selling Cutco, I didn't think I could do it at first. But as I sat there considering it, you know, at the end of my interview, I thought, well, actually, I need to do this. Like, this is exactly what I need to do to be able to come out of my comfort zone and grow a little bit and develop some of the skills that are going to help me be more successful in life. And so there is an evolution that occurs for anybody, and and it's possible for anyone to evolve into a great communicator, um, you know, who's dynamic and powerful and influential. Um, any other any other insights that you'd want to share with uh, the Cutco audience, Cutco reps, Cutco managers, Cutco alumni? Well, something I was just thinking of when you um, said that your last piece there was in order to improve your communication skills, you literally just need to go out there and communicate as often as possible to as many people as possible. And I think that's the best and fastest way to grow your communication skills. And also speaking of the introverted side, because I'm actually deeply introverted. In fact, it's really hard for me to be consistent on social media because I just internalize everything and I feel deeply, I'm a very sensitive person. And, you know, sometimes I'll second guess if it matters or not, or I just don't want to compete in the noise and my, it's tough. It's really conflicting. Um, So then I think what I've done is I've just come up with ways to manage my energy levels throughout the day. You know, so I have adequate downtime in the morning, first thing, and I'm working out and I'm disciplining my mindset and I'm having time to just process and decompress and build up toward the day. So then I can hit it really hard during the day and focus on building relationships. But then there's a transition point in the evening where then I process and I purge and decompress and let go and and take that time to repair the energy that was lost throughout the day, building relationships. So then all in all, um, I'm managing my energy levels and I'm, I'm, taking care of the introverted side without sacrificing my potential in business, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to, to touch on that. Perhaps there's a process that you can employ just by 
learning about self-development, reading Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning book, if you haven't already, um, to get some ideas. But that will really help you to feel more balanced in that way. Great. Awesome. Thank you for that. So, Amber, just to wrap this up, as you look ahead into the future, five, 10 years down the road or more, what are you most excited about? I am just excited to see where this journey continues to take me. Um, I've not been somebody, Dan, that has like a solid 30-year plan or a 10-year plan. I mean, I have ideas and goals, but I'm really just sort of open to seeing where everything takes me. So I work hard every day. I put myself out there. I'm constantly facing my fears so that I have less fear. (laughs) And I'm open to new relationships and events and traveling and everything else. So I can't predict what's going to happen, but I'm very excited um, to write my ideas about relationship building and marketing into a book and getting that out to the world within the next, I'll say two to five years. Um, I'm excited to do more speaking, create a bigger impact and to meet all of the people that I have yet to meet. Um, So I'm really inspired by that probably most of all. That's fantastic. Great. Well, Amber, the the people (laughs) in my circle who know you who do business with you they all describe you as a rock star (laughs) and i think that uh after this uh short segment here the uh audience of cutco reps cutco managers cutco alumni and anyone else who has chosen to partake in this podcast can see why Uh, i think there have been a lot of great ideas a lot of actionable concepts that have come out of Uh, this interview. And I just really want to thank you for making the time to share your wealth of knowledge with our audience here today. Oh, like I said, my time in Cutco seriously means more to me than almost anything I've ever done. So this is like bringing me back and I love it. I'm just so happy. So thank you for bringing the joy to me today. (laughs) All right. Fantastic. Well, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Dan. All right, that was Amber Vilhauer, everyone. Um, I do believe that the idea of developing our online presence is a very important tool for the future. Um, As you move forward in life, people are always gonna be trying to figure out who you are and what you're all about. And having some kind of positive presence online is critical for success, even if it's not something that you ever want to turn into a, you know, a career or a side hustle, um, I do think it's an important key. Uh, the idea of just starting, you know, starting by writing, putting some of your thoughts into words or making short, authentic videos as you're going through your regular experiences of life. Um, of course, the idea of building relationships, being open, being present, Giving without any expectation of value. That's how true, authentic, great relationships are built over time. Um, Amber talked about evolving her skills, and that's something I think everyone can take to heart. How can your skills in communication and building relationships and influence continue to evolve over time through practice? She also said, I constantly face my fears so I can have less fear. And I think that's a great uh, concept to end on today. Uh, Just the idea that uh, as you expand your comfort zone and face those fears, life becomes easier. So in the spirit of Amber Vilhauer, just remember as we leave this uh, recording today, N-G-N-G, no guts, no glory. (laughs) 